Welcome to CoreCon Today for April 13th, 2023. This is the show where I break down some of the biggest stories happening in the world of cord cutting right now and give you my opinion on them. Now, these are my opinions. If you want to learn more about these stories, check out the show notes down below as we break down things like NFL Sunday tickets, some new details about the YouTube TV deal we didn't know before, Sling TV available on more devices, and, and a whole lot more we're going to cover in this video. If you want to learn more about those, check out the show notes. First pinned comment, pull a link to each one there so you can read them for yourself. And Come up with your own opinions. I'd love to hear from you in the comments. If you're new here, you've been here a while, could you do me a favor? Could you help me grow? Could you help me support my family? Just hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, let YouTube know you enjoy what we do here, doing one or both. Let YouTube know, and then they recommend our videos, helping us grow, and hopefully helping you break free from the high cost of cable TV. All right, let's dive into it, starting off with some new details on NFL Sunday Ticket on YouTube TV. If you're looking for coverage about the new uh, HBO Max rebranding to just Max and everything Warner Brothers Discovery announced, I did a special video on that and I'll put a link to it down below. Um, and you can find it by clicking on our channel name. It's from, it was posted yesterday. All right, NFL Sunday Ticket earlier this week announced pricing. A lot of people were kind of shocked by the pricing because without the discount it is a little bit more than what um, DirecTV charged. Not a big surprise, new contract, big expense, Everything costs more now. But here's a few additional catches here you need to be aware of. For one, you only get two streams. Even if you pay for the 4K add-on to YouTube TV that gives unlimited streams in your home, you only get two streams with HBO, or excuse me, with a, um, NFL Sunday ticket, period. They're just two streams. Now they will have multi-view, so you can watch multiple games on one stream, um, but two streams at once limit your in-market games, so your local CBS, Fox, NBC, et cetera, does not count towards that two stream limit. It's only for NFL Sunday ticket streams. Um, if you have YouTube TV, it will not auto renew. You will need to renew every year. But if you subscribe through YouTube, it will auto renew if you don't cancel and it will auto renew at whatever the price that year will be. NFL Red Zone is not included with Sunday ticket. It is an additional cost. They do have a package that will include a full season of just NFL Sunday ticket. Um, NFL Red Zone, excuse me, if you don't pay for the Sunday ticket um, or, or you don't want to pay for the uh, sports add-on that also will include it. There is no student discount this year and as of today, no monthly option. I really do hope they bring back the monthly option. I think that'll bring them a lot more subscribers. It's not a discount or anything. You just spread the payment out across multiple months. And the last note, YouTube TV says there are no refunds for NFL Sunday ticket once you've paid for it. So keep moving along. YouTube TV has some other news. They struck a deal with Sinclair to keep four, um, to add four new channels. The tennis channel is coming back. That was dropped a while ago on YouTube TV. The second tennis channel, and then some smaller sub channels of Charge and TBD will be joining. Now Sinclair also renewed contracts to keep um, Sinclair owned CW and my uh, network TV stations on YouTube TV. And this deal will also keep Comet, another one of their small their um, over-the-air channels on YouTube TV. These new channels be coming June 1st, so you don't have to wait for the tennis channel, charge, and TVD to hit YouTube TV until June 1st. So let me know, what do you think of these new channels? Are you excited about the new channels? Do you not care? Tennis channel's really a fan there if you like it or not. Charge and TBD has some good content you may want to check out if you have not already checked that out. A lot of content there with it. And of course, this does keep um, Sinclair owned CBS's on YouTube TV. All right, Sling TV is now available on Amazon Echo Shows. Uh, previously, Hulu with Live TV was, now Sling TV is also, if you go into the app and link your account with your Alexa app on your mobile device or computer, you will now be able to stream Sling TV through Echo Show 8s and Echo Show 10s. Now the Echo Show 15, that much bigger one, has already had them because they had the Fire TV built into it. This brings it to the smaller Echo Show 10 and 8s, which makes them really good kitchen TVs, office TVs, just a little TV that you want to put somewhere in your house and you want a little small TV to watch stuff with. Now if you have Sling TV, this is one more device you can do. And honestly, we use an Echo Show 10 in our kitchen. We really liked it. it makes a great little kitchen TV. Rather watch YouTube, Sling TV now, Amazon Prime, whatever it may be. It's a nice way to watch a lot of content uh, on a small device. Plus have all the smart speaker features that Alexa has built into the Echo. All right, let's keep moving along. Peacock announced yesterday that they are now coming to VR. If you have a 
MetaQuest 2 VR headset or MetaQuest Pro headset, you will now be able to stream Peacock there. You'll be able to do some cool things like multitask, have a window in your vision with Peacock running, and then have browsers and other stuff running with this. No additional cost. You can download the app to your MetaQuest 2 or MetaQuest Pro app um, through their app store there. Available now. And I believe if you're not a subscriber and you own those devices, they're giving a special extended free trial. Check out the store for more details on that. All right, the CW, which has long had a free streaming service, is looking to grow and develop that. Nexstar has hired a former Roku executive who ran their ad, their program content over for the Roku channel, is now the head of streaming for the CW with that. It's a uh, chief digital officer is the new job title there for Ashley Hovey, H-O-V-E-Y. I have a last name of Bauma which no one pronounces right, so I apologize. I probably butchered that. My, my sincere apologies. Previously, she had run the, uh, been working at Roku and helping run the ad support service, the Roku channel. Now she's going over to take over the CW. According to the Nexstar, that has 92 million downloads to the CW free ad streaming app. It's available on a variety of devices, Roku, Fire TV, Apple TV, Smart TVs, mobile devices, and more. And they hope to really build that up under new leadership. Exactly what that means, I don't know. We're going to have to keep a close eye on that, but let me know what you think of the CWM. Have you checked it out? If not, it really is a lot of good free content. All right, if you're wondering why so many services are going up in price, it's probably the local channels they have. Um, it was reported here um, just recently that local channels now account for 42 billion and uh, 14.83. $3 billion, excuse me, $14.83 billion is what streaming services and cable TV companies have to pay locals every year. And that by 2027 is expected to go up to $15.93 billion, which means streaming services and cable TV companies alike are going to have to find a way to come up with a billion dollars in additional revenue to pay for local TV rights. This is a 3% jump over the last year. That means locals are getting 3% more money this year than last year, even though fewer people are watching them and fewer people are paying for them. And that's why things like YouTube TV, DirecTV, Hulu, Fubo, and more, year after year, seems like they always go up in price because a lot of times they have built-in price hikes built into their contracts right there. It sucks, it's unfortunate, but it's the reality. And what's happening here is locals are just riding the retrans instead of trying to live within what they're making instead of just trying to um, start building their ad revenue platform they're just saying hey we're just going to keep charging more we know we're really important to the subscribers companies are going to have to pay us but my thought is on this as they charge cut people more money they're driving up the cost of the services which just means more people are canceling which puts them itself in a position of just speeding up cord cutting if you um in my opinion, not just core cutting from cable, but core cutting from all live TV streaming services, as more and more core cutters keep going to on-demand only or antennas. We'll have to keep a very close eye on this, but it's very clear that live TV services is becoming increasingly non-important to people who don't pay for or don't watch sports. If you don't care about sports, increasingly you're just happy to get on-demand content through Peacock, Paramount+, Plus, Disney+, Plus, Netflix, Hulu, etc. Are you in that camp? Have you ditched live TV? Leave me a comment and let me know. Well, that's it for today. If you didn't see my breakdown of everything that was announced by HBO Max yesterday, check out that video, link in the show notes down below, and let me know what you think of it. I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, take care, be safe. I'll be back again real soon.